All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about context managers. Uh, depending on what special methods a uh, class implements, um, that class may or may not be a context manager. Um, now, it, it turns out that there's one kind of object you've used a lot uh, that is a context manager, and that is a file object. And um, what that's going to allow us to do is use file objects um, in a special way with a with and as was. And you can use any um, any context manager in this way. So let, let's look back at how we very first um, originally learned how to read and write files. Uh, we might do something like this. We would open the file. Um, at the end, we would close it. And then in between, we might do things like reading or writing to the file. And what I want you to think about is what will happen if, let's say, my hard drive runs out of space, and after I write some data, <clears throat> I crash and I can't write more. Now, uh, if that happens, there will be some sort of um, file I.O. exception. And even if I, ha I catch that, let's say I have a try and accept, uh, this close will never happen, right? So that's the problem with this piece of code, right? If kind of there's an exception in the middle, I don't clean up after myself. Uh, most of the time that doesn't matter, but in, in kind of it's good coding to make sure we don't leave uh, kind of uh, dangling resources around. Uh, because if I have too many files open, well, then I can't open any new ones, right? And, and sometimes that will matter, even though it usually doesn't. And so the preferred way to do this is like this down here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do an open just like before. And open creates a file object and returns it. And it turns out that I can put any file object, or I'm sorry, I can put any context manager uh, after the with and before as something. Right, and so the file object is a context manager, so I can put it here, and uh, and then I can write it and all of that. And the advantage of uh, using the with clause with a context manager is that it will automatically clean up resources when I'm all done. So even if I crash here, then at the end my file uh, will be closed. Okay, and so so like I said, this is a file uh, or this is a context manager. And so what does with do? Uh, with does uh, um, a couple things. Well, I guess let me give a more concrete example. Um, uh, well, I, I want to be a little bit careful here, right? Let, let me actually just let me start starting my example, and I'll talk about what it does. So I'm going to create a class called multiple pi font, and uh, this is going to be a context manager. And the idea is that if I'm creating any plots within this context, then I want the font to be larger uh, than normal. Okay, so I'm going to create that. And I'll just kind of leave it empty for now. And, um, and the idea is if I do something like this, if I say malt font as, um, as I guess I'll say as F, then any plots here, here will have larger font size. And so I'm saying I'm multiplying, maybe I multiply it by two or three or whatever. Okay, so that's the goal, right? So this is going to be a context manager. And then the context, well, is anything inside of here. And then afterwards, after the context finishes, I want to go back to the regular size. OK. And so what, what's going to happen as I run this? Um, there's going to be three things that will, well, four things that will happen. So the first thing that happens is it is going to try calling a net to create a new instance of this, right? Um, then it will, it will call this special method enter. Um, then it will, you know, put object in F, and then for uh, it's going to do the the body of the with statement, and then five is going to call this other special method called exit, and, and you don't necessarily always have to do all of these, um, but the idea here is that um, is that you know I can do some sort of setup here, but more importantly, this exit piece is going to be a function or method that it's called regardless of whether there's an exception here, right? So I can be sure that this will always run and kind of clean things up. Okay, so that's the goal. Um, let's try running this. And I see that I have a problem here. When I try to do the with statement, well, guess what? I don't have an enter, okay? So I'm gonna create that. I'm gonna say def enter self. Okay, and then I wanna do something here. So I'm gonna say, Pass for now. I'll say increase font size. Okay, so it's going to be like that. And then let me run it again. And I see the other problem is it's saying that there's no exit. 
All right, so I have to have an exit. And so let me create my exit here. This is what's trying to run at the end. And I'll just pass that for now and say, um, kind of revert font size. And so I run this and it's complaining because exit takes a bunch of stuff. And so let me head up here and we go to the documentation. I can see that whenever exit is called, it has to take all of these things. And these things are not that useful to me um, in this case, because all they're doing is really kind of telling me about what the exception was. Like if, if during step four, um, there's some sort of error or exception, step five will know about that. And, and I'm not trying to do anything differently, so I, I have to pass them in, but I can just ignore them. So I'm going to do this, and, and so far so good. And, and so let me, let me also add my init method like this. I'm going to say def init. And, um, and the reason I want that is I want to say, well, am I doubling the font size or whatever, right? So I'm going to do that. And then I'll just say self.malt equals malt. And so let me just try to print where everything is happening, right? So I'm going to say this is init. I just want you to see it before we actually get into doing something useful, right? And what order do these things get called? Uh, and then exit. Okay. And you can see I get that. I get the init which doesn't really have anything to do with the context matter. It's just the fact that I'm uh, creating an object here. Then I have enter and exit because I have the with statement, okay? And and this malt font object is going to get saved as f, uh, but that's that's optional, right? I don't need to do that. If I do that, uh, that will just be ignored, right? So whenever we're doing files, right, we actually care about what our file object is here. Um, here I don't. So I'm just trying to kind of erase this. Here to show you that I'm simplifying it a little bit. You know, if I didn't have that constructor, that wasn't there originally, and that would have been fine. And, and so, great. So I'm kind of running these three things. Kind of a complicated example because I just have like this little piece of code down here. You don't see any explicit method calls, but in that little bit, I'm actually calling three methods automatically. That's why we call them special methods. They automatically get called. Okay, so that's kind of the structure. Um, let's actually do what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to increase the font size and then put it back. So, so just kind of uh, uh, refresh our memories here. I'm going to import matplotlib .pi plot as pl as plt, and that's running slowly. And remember, that I can do this. I can say like plot dot subplots, and I get this thing. And, um, and maybe, you know, I'm not going to actually plot anything. I just kind of want to look at the font size. So I'm just going to make that like one inch by one inch. Okay. Now, if I want to, there's this dictionary, which is RC params. And, um, well, it's something like a dictionary at least. And, and, and there I can see, for example, well, what is the font size? I can see the font size is 10. If I had set it to um, you know, 14, then I'm gonna get slightly larger font down here, right? That's 14 instead of 10. Okay, so, so here's my goal. Let, let me delete all of this. I'm gonna create, oh, excuse me. I'm gonna create three plots here and like this and here. And my goal is that this will be the regular font size uh, this will be the larger font size, and this will go back to being the, the kind of small font size again. And, and right now I see it's not doing that. I'm creating my three plots, uh, but they all have the same font size. Okay, so this enter and exit is where I can really um, kind of do what I want to do, right? And, and so how am I going to do this? Um, when I enter, I am going to increase the font size. I'm going to say that times equals... Uh, well, let's say I'm passing in two, right? So two goes here, which ended up in malt. So I guess I'm doubling in this case. So I'm just going to say self.malt. Okay, times equals that. And, um, and then down here, I have to, under exit, I have to set it back, right? So I'm going to say something like um, this equals uh, uh, something. And, and to be able to do this properly, I have to remember what it was before. Uh, I guess I could divide by malt, but maybe I get some weird rounding things. So what I'm actually going to do is this. I'm going to say self.previous equals this. 
And then down here, when I exit, I can say self.previous. Right, so, so I remember what it was before upon entering the context. I make it bigger. I do my plotting with the bigger size. And then at the end of the width block, I, I exit and I set it back to what it was. Okay, and let, let me just clean up this as well. Right, so the individual just remember, right? I do init, create it, enter, and then exit. I'm gonna do this, and sure enough, you see that the plot created within the context goes back to, well, it gets larger and then it kind of gets, uh, goes back to the smaller size when I'm done. And uh, what's cool about this is, um, let's say I do something kind of silly down here. I say like, uh, you know, um, print, let's say one divided by zero. I mean, that's gonna be an exception, right? So I'm gonna run that. And so you see, I get the divide by zero error. And if I was kind of just writing regular code and not using the context manager, what that would mean is that even if I run this again later, and let's say I come down here, it wouldn't be going back to the regular size, but it does, right? Because even though there was this exception, after this exception happened, this thing ran that kind of put it back. Let, let me just prove that that's true. Right? I'm going to say exit again. Maybe I kind of took that out prematurely. All right, so you can see there's an exit, and uh, I guess it's kind of printing out the order and, and kind of strangely, right? But ultimately that runs, and then it goes back to the regular size. Now, if I want to, there's nothing stopping me from having um, kind of context within context, right? Let me, well, first off, let's just try this. What is what is this doing? And, and I, I guess I don't need this anymore. Um, that's printing two that are inside of the large context, just like that. Um, if I wanted to, I could do something like this. I could say with multiply the font times three, I could put that inside of there. Uh, well, what that means is that this is inside of the multiply by two, so that'll be two times the regular size. And I guess this middle one will be like six times the regular size, um, which you can see it as, right? So this is kind of a powerful tool, right? I guess, well, for one, it's just nice to know why we do this, why we do this when we're kind of reading and writing files. And um, at least when I learned about how context managers work, it, it kind of made me feel more confident that this close actually happens at the end because you know, F is a file object, but it also lets us do other things where we have um, kind of code where we have to do cleanup, right? We can do things like this and then and then kind of um, uh, it'll automatically clean up at the end. So it's a very powerful tool. You just have to have enter uh, and exit. And I won't really talk about how to use these in more detail. You just try to put them there.